Women podcast. For your career and your life, no matter what business you're in. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the Northern Power Women podcast. I'm Sam Walker here in Phoenix, Arizona, still a Northern Power woman. It was in the small print after moving from Manchester, of course, last year. She is Simone Roche, our great leader, Baltic Triangle in Liverpool. You're in your office right now, Simone. Indeed, looking out the window at a beautiful Anglican cathedral, the bushy trees right in front of the window. And by the way, once a Northern Power woman, forever a Northern Power woman. (laughs) (laughs) We do know that we do have Northern Power women across the entire world, of course. Shout out to Karen in Perth, who's uh, got in touch on LinkedIn, had a good chat with her. She's done some life lessons for us, of course, as well. She has, yeah. Uh, Do you know, it's brilliant. And we want to know, where are you? Where are you in the world? Because it's brilliant. We get these different messages. And again, the the Australian following is is absolutely grown since we had uh, Karen on the life lessons. But tell us where you're from. Let's, Let's spread the message far and wide across this globe. Absolutely. Tweet us at North Power Women or get in touch on email podcast at northernpowerwomen.com. I thank you very much indeed. Right, this week, it's been that funny week, hasn't it, where the big changes started in the UK, everything opening up in July, everyone was holding their breath, waiting for huge COVID spikes when everything opened back up. And I mean, thank goodness, so far there don't seem to have been that spikes and, and people kind of returning to work but at a time of anxiety as well Simone because of course the furlough scheme is coming to an end yep the furlough scheme is uh, you know changing in the in the rules if you like whereby employees are having to pay certain amounts to contribute mm. and that will change each month um so what's really interesting is you know there's always through a crisis there is always innovation and uh, one of our good northern power women friends alex cousins was was made redundant and left her job on friday and but has come up um, and has created this covid change makers campaign wow. and this is about grabbing um wrapping an arm around and grabbing the absolute talent that is out there and not letting them fall into that what could be four million people unemployed gotcha. in a short period of time and and the whole premise is is you know you've got people whether they were at senior levels on board level or people at the start of their career with a you know a raft of skills and equally you've got businesses you know like our very own northern mm. power women northern power futures that you know have had our own challenges um, through through the, the last few months. Um, so whether it is you're looking to survive or whether you're looking to, to grow and scale, we want to mobilize the talent that is out there to be able to, to support. And, and so I suppose we're creating an, an army of experts, freelancers, um, and so this is going to be part of, um, you know, sort of Alex's new world going forward. She doesn't want to go back on the train and work down in, in, in London and run yeah. around around the country. So what she wants to do is, you know, she's created COVID change makers. If you want to get involved or support or put yourself forward or declare that you're one of these people, then please get involved. We, we're putting everything. And this is the beauty of this power platform that we've built it was all about enabling that generosity of spirit and skills and sharing of knowledge. And yeah. this has come from that. So if you want to get involved, then please uh, go to the Power Platform. There's more information there. But yeah, let's let's make sure that we're not losing um, this amount of talent and skills out there because it's, it's challenging times ahead. Yeah. Um, and I think, as you say, we're, we're coming, we're into a new phase. And I, I think, I feel like the new cycle has changed as well. Yeah. Um, we've gone from every everything being COVID and pandemic to anti-Semitism, to Brexit, to, you know, some, some the random surveys and reports that you get out, that they used to be maybe one thing at the, the end of the news. Now that seems to have, I feel like COVID and the pandemic is at the end of the news now, or, or where the big news, I think, is how many... Um, vaccines we're buying from uh, or potential vaccines we're buying from different people that are you know creating them around the world so it's it is quite interesting quite interesting i'm seeing because i think when you talked the other week about the massive spike in Arizona being related to people dining in restaurants, they've tracked it through credit card receipts. Yes. I've been waiting for that I've been waiting since July the fourth Independence Day for this to happen here and i'm it's it's not which Gosh, I don't. I sound dismayed, and I'm not. I just think that's what we were expecting. Yeah. Um, but it, we don't seem to have had that yet. 
Well, hopefully you absolutely won't because it's not a pleasant thing for obviously any any mm. state or country or city or whatever to go through. So let's very much hope that that doesn't happen and maybe lessons have been learned by the way that America didn't deal very well with things opening back up. It's interesting you're talking about the COVID change makers and, and the fact that people perhaps don't want to return as Alex Cousins doesn't to that more corporately structured working life that they have. Other people will want to return to that security, but of course may not be able able to. So it is going to be times of kind of flux and anxiety. But as we've said so many times, it's a, it's about writing your own story, really, isn't it? And being able to embrace changes. And even these massive corporations out there are looking at, at changing the way that they work. I was reading about Unilever this week. It's become the most valuable company in the FTSE 100 after, I suppose, lockdown lifestyle changes means that everyone was buying cleaning supplies and ice cream. And, you know, they make SIF and they make dough and they make all of these different things. And I think the fact that that their company is is really blossoming they're also saying look they are, they employ 50,000 people 2,000 of the 2,000 of those people based in offices in the UK they've said publicly we do not ever expect our 2,000 office workers to come back to the office full time we never ever see a future where that is going to be a reality and that's extraordinary for such a big corporately structured organization to say things have changed in these months and we don't see that returning and i think if if these kind of big giants these big oil tankers of company are slowly starting to turn we are going to see that rippling throughout the whole of society and maybe we are going to you know this job for life we've known hasn't existed for a generation now really but i think more than ever people are going to be looking at different ways of making a living and that can be challenging I think it is. I think there's two things there. I think uh, talking with um, a, a local authority this week and they've got a head office um, which houses 10,000 people and they're like, wow. we are not going to go back till 2021 into the office because we cannot safely social distance. So mm-hmm. that's one decision. And I'm like, gosh, that's nine months out of the workplace. There's got to be a whole return to work, you know, approach around mental health, getting people back in. You know, we, we have come back, but... We, we we risk assessed it when there's 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 only two of us, so it's yeah. it's kind of easy to do. But one of the um, the other interesting things, these power circles that we've been uh, running. We've got our, our, our fourth round starting uh, today and Professor Alison Shaw at Newcastle University and Emily Cox uh, from Lloyds Banking Group, we've been talking with them absolutely about this new ways of working So and the different styles. So it's not work from home or work in the office or agile working. It's it's totally away from that. You know, it's totally, there's, there's about eight or nine different options that we've, you know, that we've kind of looked at that we're now going, actually, we need to, let's go, let's deep down, let's dig down into this because we need to be talking about it because I don't think it is a bit, all right, let's press return. Let's go back to the way we were. No, 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 that's not possible. And we can't quite try to squeeze that bit into a new way. So I think we have to, I'm quite excited to investigate. So I'll, I'll keep everyone informed on this, but, you know, eight or nine different ways, but flexibility has got to be a you know got to be key yeah. um so you know i think whilst i'm talking about the new cycle feels as though it's really changed and moved away we're still a long way from really identifying the new norms and the yeah. new everything 100 percent. and you know back to unilever they're talking about the shift in the way that they see their workforce interacting and they see they've they say they've seen you know massively increased productivity from people working remotely which is positive for a lot of people they're also warning there that they have seen the global recession has already begun you know this spending shift has already occurred and i think for a lot of companies as well, there's going to have to be a change in the focus of the way that they connect with their customers. I mean, customer experience surely is going to become the pivotal aspect of any business. It's not enough to have a great product anymore. It's not even enough to have a great price point. When there is fewer spending pounds in people's pockets, how are they going to choose where to spend that money and who to interact with? They're going to interact with the companies and the organisations that give them that great customer experience. So I think this is going to be positive again for a lot of people who are kind of clued up in, in that whole sector. But for others, this is kind of 
kind of going to sort the wheat from the chaff, isn't it? And I think we're going to see a lot of really challenging times ahead for people who aren't really able to pivot in that way. I think we are. And I think it, it, it's absolutely got to put, you know, people are at the heart of this, whether it's our, our colleagues, you know, our workforce or, you know, and our customers. It, and I think customers will really look for that when they're making their choices. You know, it, you know, uh, there's been obviously hand sanitizer and wipes everywhere. But actually, there's certain places that you can go into now. Nah, that's kind of gone a bit. Kind of really? gone a bit. It felt like, yeah, it felt Whoa. like, it, you know, in some places, oh, was that just a bit for show? Was that just, you right. know, um, and yeah, that's that's a worry, you know. And some of them have got the signs up, hand sanitizer here. Well, there's, and it was a wall mounted, not there anymore, not there anymore. Because guess what, hand, sa- you know, this thing's it's expensive, isn't it? It's an expense that they didn't have before. Yeah, you know. So I think, and I saw um, a very uh, well known hairdresser be interviewed earlier this week alongside a local hairdresser and the local hairdresser was they were basically talking about that the high-end hairdresser was talking about how he was passing on all of the PPE costs and all of the you know to his customers yeah. and the the local salon was like absolutely this is it this is for the long game I've got to look after my customers and there was it was really interesting and you think from a, a high-end perspective obviously they you know you're not talking 10 quid for a cut you know you're talking probably 10 times that but so it's really interesting that that the different approaches so the the local salon is going you know what i'm i'm thinking bigger i'm thinking longer term and over here you've got uh, you know and somebody else is going ah you know what yeah well we'll just add it on the price because it's cost me and i understand i understand this is really challenging for for small businesses but i think it's it's how you're going to remembered coming through this 100%, 100% 100%, 100% customer experience is really, I think, going to be key. And noticing just, you know, anecdotally, a lot of people as they did start going back into restaurants, a number of times I've seen the phrase, I just felt really safe. Mm. And it's all about experience. It's great to be out and about again. It's great to eat food that you haven't cooked yourself, my goodness. <laughs> but uh, uh, number one, people are going, oh, I felt safe. I felt secure. I felt I felt like I was all right with my family. And yeah, that customer experience, I think, is going to... Mark my words, Simone. Uh, it's going to be really, really key, I think, to how, how business full stop moves forward. Um, talking about making big changes to your life... Let's do life lessons this week because we love this every single week. We love the fact you get in touch and just share some nuggets of wisdom that you've learned along the journey of your life and your career. And every week is different. And that is what's so brilliant. And I've personally gained so much from listening to these. Blimey, this week, though, it's like a roller coaster, Simone, isn't it? It is. And uh, Laura Hepburn this week, she talks pretty much every week about the corona, the corona coaster that she's been on. And actually so much so she recorded her first set of life lessons on the 1st of April. And when we were looking to schedule it, I went, Laura, I think you need to re-record this because you've shared with us some of the things that have happened uh, during this 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 lockdown period. And when we talk about somebody that has been through the mill and has been through some really kind of scary stuff. So never mind life lessons. These are Laura Hepburn's COVID lessons. Good afternoon, my Northern Power Women. My name is Laura Hepburn. I'm the director of Greenology. So I'm going to start with what advice would you pass on to someone starting their career today? I would definitely say to anybody, be a chameleon, but not a pigeon. I think the one thing that I've learned, I was never very good at being good at one thing, but I was pretty good at doing lots of things. And I think we've been in a society where people have said, when I grow up, I'm going to be. We don't have that society anymore. We need to be able to change what we're doing. We need to adapt. We need to have variances. We need to have multi-skills. And I definitely would say it's no good pigeonholing yourself. Don't be that grey dull bird. Why not be that colourful chameleon who can change and adapt to any situation? What would you tell a 25-year-old you about a work-life balance? When I was 25, I had two babies, 10 months apart, Irish twins, excellent. And I was at university. Uh, didn't have baby daddy, he'd gone by that point 
and I was also holding down three jobs, uh, kept myself busy. So I think what I would say to the 25 year old version of me back then is do not feel guilty for the things that you're doing. Your kids will thank you later on. So when you're dropping those babies off at nursery and thinking, oh my God, I've only seen you for five minutes today, you're doing it for the right reason because you're gonna give them a future. So don't you ever, ever feel guilty. And you know what? Hi, flipping five. You're doing a great job. Just keep going. Give us an example of when a strong business network came into its own. Okay, so we're talking COVID. My business, since January, has been on biblical proportions. So we've had three floods, which set us back. We've had COVID, which is your virus, if you want to call it, your plague. And then, unfortunately, uh, four weeks ago, we had arson. And my business, one of my sites, was burnt to the ground. This was obviously a monk's COVID. And at the time, when I saw my business burning to the ground, I was obviously devastated. It's a long story of how we got there to that point, but I did warn people that I felt that it was going to happen. And thank God I had the Northern Power Women in my life because that strong business network, when you are a director, it can be so bloody lonely. And if it's a business where maybe there's elements that you've not had to deal with, I've never had a fire, I've never had to deal with staff who have been threatened and death threats and rape threats and things like that I could lean on my fellow Northern Power Women and they came to the front and they have helped me no end and the advice the support the people they knew I needed somebody in crisis comms somebody jumped out straight away somebody jumped out that had some spare office furniture somebody jumped out who's from the environmental sector somebody jumped out who was a solicitor that network is priceless and it just feels like you are part of a gang, like you've got the biggest pair of arms around you. And if you need to kick some ass, there's hundreds of women behind you who are rooting for you, who are gonna help you get to where you need to be. So no matter how dark my days have been, and people keep saying to me, how are you smiling? I've got no choice, I've got to smile because I've got some amazing things coming up in the future. And I've got a really great team who've been to hell and back and they want to see me smiling too so that they can feel better. But the things that make me smile, good old podcast and amazing stories from other women that help me get to where I want to be. And that is down to the Northern Power Women. When have you taken a risk and what happened? I am a risk taker. I think it's in my DNA. I think it's my makeup. I don't know whether it's because between me and you, I had a fairly crappy upbringing and I had to survive. And I think part of that is being brave. And if you are brave, you've got to have an element of thinking, feck it, I'm gonna go for it. Because what else are you gonna do? What's the worst that's gonna happen? As long as nobody dies or nobody's gonna get hurt, you just go get a job again. So. There's times in life, and I have I put myself on the line all the time. I've just started two new businesses last week in the time of crisis. Because if you don't do that, you will always be where you've always been. And I think it's so important to take a risk and you will have opportunities come to you for doing that. And you'll be rewarded, but you will be able to do some amazing things, but you've got to be brave. Tell me about an important role model in your life. I previously would have said my daughter, my family, um, some great business women around me. But to be fair, there's one person that sticks out in my head. I remember being a six year old child. And most kids were rushing in to come and watch She-Ra or He-Man or Button Moon or whatever it was in 1986. I was a six year old little girl that used to get in every day and try and find out about Tracy Edwards and she was on a maiden voyage. She took part in the race as the first all-female crew in the Whitbread, uh, Whitbread round the world race. And 
I was just mesmerized by this woman. She raised money. She built a boat with a crew that never done it before and what they didn't know they learnt themselves. And she wasn't told that she wouldn't do the race. She was told that she would die. So, you know, she did a 33,000 mile race. She kicked butt. She sailed into the history books. She came second overall with a female crew, but she said one thing that has powered me on through life, and that would be, you can't be beaten to be the first to do something. So bearing that in mind, no matter how many fires, no matter how much pressure, no matter how many people are on my case, I have literally signed a deal this week amongst COVID, amongst fires, amongst floods and biblical proportions, for a new piece of kit worth five million to be able to be the first person, woman, in the country, in the world, to be recycling wind turbine blades. Wasn't what I set out to do, but hell, I'm gonna do it because you can't be beaten to be the first to do something. Oh my goodness me, I feel like I need to lie down after listening to that. What Laura has been through over the past couple of months. I know so many of us have faced so many personal challenges and it's absolutely not a competition for who's had it hardest, but that whole experience has got to be up there. But what an incredible attitude she has brought to those massive, massive disadvantages that she's faced. Absolutely. And you may not be aware, but, you know, Laura was in the film business. You know, she she that was the industry she went before she came into the the green, the green world. And I'm like, Laura, for the love of God, you are absolutely directing your own movie every day um, through this. And yet and yet she's she's not just come through it. She's thrived. And one of the great things that she told me about uh, uh, this week, actually, is that because of the innovation, because of the the way she has moved and seen an opportunity, she's going to be making 50 new jobs. Wow. So 50 new jobs over in Tees Valley. It's a great story, isn't it? It's a great story of spirit. It's a great story of resolution. It's a great story. Absolutely needs to be a movie, a box set <laughs> and a book, I think. <laughs> I love that. That's tremendous. And, you know, as someone who's failed to learn to make the perfect risotto, or fail to learn to speak Cantonese uh, during lockdown. I really, really admire uh, the massive skills and challenges that um, she's gone through as well. Talking of that brilliant skill that so many people have mastered or taken up during lockdown, I loved this story. And I just have this vision of so many men of a certain age revisiting their teenage dreams. And I don't mean that in a patronising way at all because I genuinely think it's brilliant. The sales of electric guitars, Simone, have gone up 80% during lockdown in the wow. UK compared to this time last year. My husband started playing his guitar a load more, actually. And I like the fact that people are kind of revisiting joyful hobbies from their childhood. Uh... I haven't yet to do that. How's your jigsaws going? <laughs> do you know what? I'm again a bit of a jigsaw drought. I think it's four weeks since I've, I've managed to <gasps> do a jigsaw, and I've got it. I know I've got a lovely Albert Dock jigsaw that I need to be getting out. But the the guitar thing's quite. It's funny because I think when you watch TV news interviews um, where people are obviously you know video calling in from home or whatever, yeah. if there's not a bookcase in the back, there's a guitar. Oh really? And sometimes <laughs> multiple guitars. So that's obviously people are obviously do. I would some of these just props just props for the <laughs> for the tv interviews but seriously never mind the rise in sales of guitars jigsaws 80 odd percent rise so just saying jigsaw <sighs> guitar wars <laughs> you see i was just hoping therefore you were going to suggest a northern power women band i could start having a go on my husband's <laughs> electric guitar i can see you maybe warbling along some let's think about it you never know you you, you heard a... me play that blower last week i've got that you know that kazoo style blower i'll be all over that Eurovision 2021, why not? <laughs> Northern Power Women, let's do it. 
if you want to join if you would like to join our band if you would like to send a life lesson however you would like to get in touch we'd love to hear from you anything that you've been tackling during lockdown or as we move out into quote the new normal do let us know please what you would like us to discuss or any tips or lessons you can share your life lessons included of course podcast at northernpowerwomen.com or tweet us at North Power Women on Twitter as well we're on LinkedIn we're on Instagram we're everywhere come and say hello it would be lovely 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 to hear from you right Simone I'm off to learn some new riffs on my guitar you go off and do a jigsaw and don't forget of course that the next episode of the Northern Power Women podcast is coming your way are you ready for this can't believe it don't say it Monday the 3rd of August oh my (sighs) gosh August is upon us thank you so so much for listening we will speak to you this time next week until then I'm Sam Walker she's Simone Roche and the Northern Power Women podcast is a What Goes On Media production 